Welcome to the Swedish Maker. Today I'm doing a review of the Chinese leather sewing machine. So I got this machine a couple of weeks ago because I was making this leather bag and I didn't want to do all the sewing by hand. So I got it from Amazon where it can be bought from several different sellers for around a hundred dollars. So are they selling the same machine you might ask? Most of the machines are the same machine, but read the description before you purchase. Uh, I'll have a link to this one uh, in the description down below. Now concerning the price, it is really cheap, uh, but it comes with another price. You have to do a lot of maintenance yourself. Now it comes with this stand, uh, which is awful because the whole machine wobbles when you crank the wheel. So the first deal of business is getting rid of this and making something custom. Now in my case I made this out of plywood but it can of course be simplified a lot more. So in my case I wanted something that I could clamp down to the table so that I know it stands still when I'm sewing and also to have this handle away from the table so that my hand wouldn't hit the table when I was cranking it. The crank is a pretty simple plastic handle that can be swapped for something else. Uh, in my case it seems okay for now so I kept it. And this rotates and lifts the arm and the presser foot up and down. So the presser foot comes with sharp teeth which definitely moves the leather but also makes dents in it. So to prevent that I sanded the teeth down a bit and also dipped this in Plasti Dip. And the Plasti Dip in my case wasn't the original so it kind of seems to wear off a bit, but I can always uh, spray it again. And the pressure of the presser foot can also be adjusted with this bolt right here. I've also seen other pressure foots that can be bought separately from eBay and I'll leave a link down below to that which has uh, rubber feet. And another thing that can be done is to polish this plate right here so that the leather runs smoothly. Now the needle drops down into the bobbin right here and the lid that protects the bobbin can be removed like this. And it is quite easy to get the bobbin up but I made this sewing guide with magnets uh, on the underside and I've actually used that to get the bobbin out of there. And the bobbin thread can also be wound up with this which rotates and you put the bobbin thread right here like this and it rotates around. Now I've seen a lot of people having problem with the tension and there are two places right here where we can adjust the tension with these nuts. And depending on the thread thickness we can all choose to use only one of them. There's also another bolt right here which we can use to adjust the stitching length. Now I've also seen people having timing issues and I think that can be solved pretty easily by setting the bobbin straight. And in my case, that is when the handle is at 12 o'clock and the thread will come out right here in this little dent. Now there are many different sized threads and needles that can be used with the machine and this bolt right here is supposed to hold the thread. In my case, I made this plastic washer that goes on top of here and in my case, this helped me a lot. And the spanner is here on the back of the machine so it's pretty easy to reach it and lift the presser foot. So the main issues I've had with this machine is getting a straight stitching line and to remedy that I used a stitching groover to cut a straight line in the leather beforehand. Another thing was getting the presser foot to move the leather without leaving any marks onto the leather. And as I said, I sanded down the teeth a bit and added some Plasti Dip and that seemed to work okay for me. Another thing I did was have my wife crank the wheel so that I could focus on getting the leather and the stitching line straight. And that can also be solved by electrifying the machine, which I've seen a lot of people do and I might do that in the future as well. Now another addition I made was this little table that I can use to have big pieces of leather lie straight on top of here and that will help the stitching a lot. Now is it worth buying? And I would say yes, if you're prepared to do some maintenance and I think you should be because it will save you a lot of time even with the maintenance included. Uh, it's definitely worth the price uh, of hundred dollars to save a lot of time on hand stitching. At least that's the case for me. Now that's about it. This was just a quick review. If you liked this episode please consider hitting the thumbs up and consider subscribing, uh, it really helps a lot. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.